And then there were eight. That's right. Matt Joseph's here. Sportsmemo.com. We're talking FCS football. We are down to eight teams in the FCS playoffs. Four games all on Sunday, two at three o'clock. One at six, one at nine. We'll preview them all and talk a little futures as well. Joining me as he has all throughout the season from wagertalk.com is Rob Vino. Rob, how's it going? We're good today, Matt. How about yourself? Doing well. Um, uh, We'll get to the JMU game a little later. I had a chance to talk to their coach this week, so that was uh, a lot of fun. But uh, before we talk about this week, Rob, uh, we talked about it last week, the futures board. Let's uh, take a look at the updated futures. And I know that there may not necessarily be value and be a lot of change with regards to what's happening at the top of the board, Rob. But has your change, big picture, changed at all for the playoffs? Wow, I'm trying to read the futures board here. Um. Well, last week we were talking about suggested long shots um, to maybe win, and I threw Jacksonville State out there. They look pretty good. They may have had the softest opponent. Um, but I think that in, you know, and, and matchups make games, Matt, and styles make games. But I think off of last week's results, uh, FCS public opinion of Sam Houston State has probably dropped a little bit. Uh, they get a tough matchup this week that we'll get into in a minute. South Dakota State looked really good. I don't know that overall much changed uh, in my line of thinking, except that maybe Sam Houston State um, might have gone down a little bit in in uh, the eyes of myself and a bunch of others that, you know, are inside and tuned into FCS football. I, I feel like, and obviously you can't bet this way, I feel like the winner of the North Dakota JMU game is going to be worth a look when we get down to the Final Four, but you're obviously not going to get the same price that you have. So if you have a lean in that game, and we'll get to that in just a moment, um, you can maybe take the winner and, and play a future bet because I feel like either North Dakota or JMU has what it takes to win it all. All right, so as I said, Sunday, 3 o'clock is when we're going to get things started, and we will start with the defending champions, North Dakota State, a road favorite in this game against uh, Sam Houston State. North Dakota State opened about a two-and-a-half point favorite. Sam Houston State, uh, the total 47. Total's gone up a little bit. It's 47-and-a-half, but it's maintained two-and-a-half. There is a three out there on an offshore book. And a couple of notes for this game. I mean, it's all going to come down to the running games. And there are two losses this year. The Bison have been held to 97 yards on the ground by South Dakota State, 109 yards on the ground by Southern Illinois. And you look at Sam Houston State, their rush defense has been incredible so far this season. They rank second in the country with 31 sacks. Granted, they're coming off a less than impressive win against Monmouth last week, but we do know how good Eric Schmidt is. And you look at North Dakota State's quarterback situation, just a couple of passes from Miller last week, but he did what he had to and got things going. So, Rob, a home dog here in this round between North Dakota State and Sam Houston State. Yeah, you know, Matt, if this was the NCAA tournament um, where Sam Houston State is concerned, we would probably say that on your way to six consecutive wins and a national championship, you always have to have that one close game, or most always the team that wins has that one close game. Maybe that was it for Sam Houston State last week, a game in which they led 21 to nothing and then were 16 yards from actually being eliminated at the end of that game. An interception in the end zone saved the day. Um, Listen, the statistics don't do them any favors last week. Uh, they lose the first down battle 27-9. They lose total plays 92 to 49. They lose time of possession 39-41 to 2019. Now the good notes for Sam Houston, the defense, especially that front seven, um, where sacks are concerned. They were all over Monmouth in that game for about three and a half quarters, maybe a little less, but they had six sacks. They held Monmouth 2.2 yards per carry. We know that the yards per carry in college includes sack yardage, so Monmouth did run for a little more than that, but they attempted to run the football because they're a balanced offense all game long and really couldn't get it done. Uh, where Sam Houston's concerned, 127 of their 257 total yards came on three plays. You take those three plays away, and it's 46 plays for 2.8 yards per play. That's against a Monmouth defense, which granted, good pass rush, um, led the country in sacks per game on average, and they came to play last week. So, you know, we'll see if Sam Houston just let off the gas pedal with the 21 to nothing lead, or if it's a sign of things to come. You know, the offense for a minute there, when you see how poorly they played, you would ask yourself, was this offense all season long a product of opposing Southland Conference defenses? 
which as we all know, they all stink, every one of them up and down the line. So uh, they'll, they'll be tested this week against North Dakota State. North Dakota State, they struggled early with EWU. Eric Berrier and company scored on their first three drives, all touchdown drives, 85, 53, 79 yards, 218 total yards in all in route to a 20-7 to lead. But that's where it all ended. Came crashing down for EWU, only 85 yards on their final six drives of the game. And mostly, I would say, Matt, it's because North Dakota State's offense just took over in North Dakota State fashion, pounding the football, running, um, grinding EWU into the turf, wearing them down. 425 rush yards, 7.4 per carry for NDSU. Keys to the game. And what you said right off the bat, I think, makes a ton of sense here because the first note I have for keys to this game is each rushing offense against the opposing rushing defense, especially where North Dakota State is concerned. Sam Houston State, we know, has that stonewall front. And if they can't run, this is one of the worst pass offenses in FCS football. I think they rank 84th in pass yards per game. So to ask Cam Miller, a guy who went 6 for 11 last week with a couple of touchdowns, um, wasn't asked to do very much through the air at all, to ask him to do a lot this week, I think could be problematic against Sam Houston State. Sam Houston State gives up a ton of passing yards. Again, some of it product of the teams they play. But can NDSU, you know, take advantage of that? I'm not sure that they can take advantage of that with their passing game. They need to run. They're not going to run it the way they ran it against Eastern Washington. No way. Sam Houston State a little more balanced. Tell you the truth, this total sits at 47 and a half, and I can really see it going under. I think both offenses will be, or defenses, excuse me, will be the stars of the day. Push comes to shove. One team is asked to throw the ball to win the game. You have to put your money on Sam Houston State. They are at home. Um, Perhaps a very slight lean towards the home underdog here, but I think more than that, I like under 47 and a half. And just to look here at the weather out in Huntsville real quick, the precipitation, there will be a little bit of rain earlier in the day, but it looks like it's going to taper off in time and there's just going to be a little bit of wind. So that's um, not exactly going to help you. I, I, I think I like the, the home dog. I do. I think that when you look at Sam Houston State, I think that uh, last week was a product of just not taking Monmouth very seriously. And I think that they'll be very serious and ready for this one. So I know it's nerve wracking to go up against the train that is North Dakota State, but um, I'm going to do it. I'm going to take... Uh, Sam Houston State. Um, Team number one in the CAA, Delaware. They are on the road against Jacksonville State. This game also at 3 o'clock. Jacksonville State opened as a a 1.5 point favorite. Total was at 41. It has gone up to 3.5 now. Total is 41.5. There are some 42s out there on some of the uh, sports books. And just a couple of notes here. Of course, Delaware last week, a 19-10 win over Sacred Heart. They allowed just 87 passing yards. They have not allowed 21 points to anyone yet. But Delaware, 37.1% conversion rate on third down. That's just not going to get it done. They do make up for that, though, with a plus 11 turnover margin through six games this season. That is is the best in the country. Jacksonville State scored three touchdowns in seven minutes in the second quarter to win that game easily over Davidson and crushing them, despite the fact that Davidson actually held the ball for 18 minutes more. So really, Rob, I feel like this is, do you feel like Delaware got the kinks out of their system in their first game and they're going to play better here? Or is Jacksonville State a team that has played both in the fall and now in the spring, is that experience and everything going to carry them forward in this matchup? I think it will, personally. Um, I think they're the more rounded team. I don't think that, you know, as is the case in maybe a couple of the other games here, Matt, I don't think that we have that big of a strength of schedule difference. Coming from the Ohio Valley is not great. Um, Delaware didn't play a taxing schedule this season either. So I think that where schedule is concerned, we can rate them on a level playing field. The quarterback play of Nolan Henderson was good in the CAA for Delaware, but wasn't necessarily great last week against Sacred Heart. You know, this is a team that has hitched everything to their defense, which has been outstanding all season long. And the running game. And it's interesting, Matt, because the eight teams that are remaining here, all eight of these teams sit inside the top 25 in FCS rushing offense. So you've got all eight teams that really like to run it first and throw it second. There's only one team out of these eight that sits in the top 25 in passing offense, and that's Sam Houston State. So the rest are all, you know, pass comes off of the run. 
And can they run against Jacksonville State? Big question here because Jacksonville State, again, there's a lot of these good run defenses remaining. Jacksonville State, one of them, uh, I think a little bit surprising that they've been as good as they've been against the run, but no doubt week in and week out, it's been a tough group to run it against. And I just wonder where Delaware will turn if they can't run the football here. Uh, you know, the, the um, great equalizer always is turnover creation. And can Delaware create turnovers and get themselves good field position to help score points? That's always possible. But Jacksonville State, for the most part, has been pretty careful with the football. Um, good quarterback play, great ground game. Certainly, they want to run it first. I think they're a little better in the past game. All things considered here, I just think Jacksonville State is the more rounded team. And I think Delaware may have seen their last game with that win last week against Sacred Heart. It was very hard fought against a Sacred Heart team that, you know, the week before had trouble with Duquesne in the uh, conference championship game. Duquesne with 14 fourth quarter points and some big pass plays. They just didn't seem like a team to me that offensively can get it done here against this type of defense. So I'm going to be on Jacksonville State again. I thought they could be a long shot possibility to win the whole thing. Um, they still might. I don't think they're the best team remaining in the group, but I think they're good enough to cover the number here against Delaware. Yeah, and I was looking at the under here. I, I feel like this could be, mm -hmm. you know, Delaware's defense is going to keep them in it, and their their offense is just going to struggle. Uh, one thing to consider here, the weather could be a little bit of an issue towards the back end of the game. There is potential for some rain. It's only like 25%, 30%, but it's something to watch. And also potential here uh, for live betting. Maybe if uh, Delaware gets an early lead, you still like Jacksonville State, you can improve upon your position, although it is only 3.5 right now. Uh, the total is 41.5. If somehow that thing ticks up to 42, which I don't think it will, um, I, I still like the under. I think the under is the way to go in that game. All right, game number three. This one's at 6 o'clock, and it features North Dakota and James Madison. The Dukes, a two-and-a-half-point favorite. The total it opened at 53 with a lean to the over. Uh, and now it's going down to 52-and-a-half, and, a half, and the, the two-and-a-half is getting stronger. There's some minus 125s out there, minus 115. So the book's sticking firm to this two-and-a-half uh, point spread. And as I said, I talked to Coach uh, Signetti a little bit earlier, and, you know, he was pleased with some things with regards to their offense. Anytime you can get a 99-yard touchdown run when VMI was was you know stacking the box against it. And Coach talked about how it was kind of a new personnel package that they were trying to work out. So it's always good to see that James Madison is doing some things with the run game. Everybody knows what's coming, and they're still able to do it. My concern with James Madison, though, is Cole Johnson, who, you know, a couple of interceptions, a couple of touchdown passes, only completed 50% of his passes. You look at North Dakota, their offensive line, they have the fewest tackles for losses in this season. They've surrendered just one sack all season, a plus seven turnover margin. I don't know if I'm ready to quit the Dukes here, Rob, but uh, North Dakota presents a massive uh, challenge for James Madison. They do, Matt. And I think that both of these teams, uh, this is probably your best matchup. I think you hit on that at the top of the show, uh, a potential for either one of these teams to go the distance. North Dakota, which started the season so strong with all their games at home, then had that very long layoff and came back last week and showed no signs of rust whatsoever. I kick myself, actually, for missing that game. You know, the money came in so strong on the other side, on the Bobby Petrino, Missouri State side. Uh, I think that game closed somewhere around four and a half. North Dakota, a very slim favorite at home. And, and from opening kick to final play, they dominated Missouri State. I think um, North Dakota, one asset that they have that no other team in this uh, Final Eight tournament has is the fact that they sit top 10 in quarterback sacks by their defense per game and fewest quarterback sacks allowed. So in the trenches, both sides, very, very good. I think schedule strength will play a lot in this one. I think you have to rate North Dakota. The far superior strength of schedule here, they played Southern Illinois, which is a playoff team. They played South Dakota State, which is a playoff team. North Dakota State, they win two out of those three. Problem for me would be that they're now out of their dome and they're on the road at JMU. That could be significant, could not. We'll see how they handle it. This is not common territory for North Dakota like it is for JMU. Um, the price on this game makes it really, really difficult, Matt. If it had been the other side of the field goal, three and a half, I think I'd easily be on North Dakota, uh, North Dakota, excuse me. But 
under the field goal, two and a half, makes it difficult. Your point about erratic quarterback play from James Madison, well taken. I think they both, again, they have similar assets, good run offense, good run defense. Can JMU throw it when they have to in this game? We'll see. North Dakota can be somewhat vulnerable um, in the past game, allowing yards. But <clears throat> I don't know. I think mm, it's, it's too close for me to call. I don't like either way sidewise, and I'm still looking at the total. So to me, the toughest game on the board to decide. Yeah, I, I think I'm leaning JMU, but I don't know if it's a homer factor. Let me ask you this. If JMU blows out VMI, is this line any different? Is there some value because VMI got that last touchdown and, and James Madison didn't look their best last week? According to my power ratings, no. Um, <clears throat> but I'm not the odds makers either. So I'm not positive how, what they did in adjustments for their power ratings. But I really didn't. Um, to me, JMU was convincing. Uh, in that game, but, you know, I made the number fairly close here to what it is right now. Um, so I don't think there was any real significance um, point spread wise to VMI getting that last touchdown last week. So that's, um, I mean, for me, I, as I say, it's just a lean to James Madison. And, and potentially here, I would potentially just look at the JMU money line. I mean, if you want to. So here's what I would do, considering um, if you do like James Madison, wait till closer to kick off. If it keeps falling, then you take the spread. If it doesn't keep falling and somehow it stays around here, maybe you consider the money line um, as an option. It's a minus 140. I know it's a little bit of juice. But if you like James Madison, that's how I'd approach it. If you like North Dakota, I don't think you're going to see a three. The books have pretty much stayed firm on the two and a halves and just adju uh, adjust the juice so it's almost like maybe you put half a unit on the money line half a unit on the spread so that's james madison and north dakota at six o'clock the nightcap on sunday is south dakota state they are hosting southern illinois it is a uh south dakota state opened a 15 point favorite total 56 with a heavy lean to the over total's gone down a little bit it's 54 there are some 54 and a halfs in the vegas books but the uh, spread has stayed pretty firm at 15 and a half there's a 15 there's a 14 and a half um, and this is a rematch. San Diego State, uh, excuse me, South Dakota State won 44 to three over Southern Illinois earlier in the season. It wasn't even that close. I mean, it was just pretty much uh, Southern Illinois scored the first three points, and then an avalanche came, and it was 44 to three. Southern Illinois got the win at Weber State. We called it last week. We liked uh, the Salukis on the show. They get the outright win with the late touchdown. Um, South Dakota State gets the easy win over uh, Holy Cross, 31 to three here. And Rob, sometimes the concern here, and we talk about this in the NFL playoffs, teams traveling on the road a couple of weeks in a row. Um, this is the second straight week for Southern Illinois on the road, but they're playing a team they're familiar with, and sometimes familiarity helps out this situation. So how are you handicapping this matchup? Well, I think you have to like Southern Illinois from an offensive standpoint, but defensively, Matt, um, unlike the other seven teams that are remaining here in the FCS playoffs, they sit outside the top 50 in a bunch of defensive categories. You can run on them. You can throw on them. You can do just about anything you want to do on them. And Weber State, a team which had not necessarily been an offensive juggernaut in their own conference, Big Sky, puts up 443 total yards last week. Made it look easy early. Um, but Southern Illinois leaned on the balanced offense, came back and got that win late in that game. And if they're going to make an improvement here, in this contest, which was, as you mentioned, a blowout the first time, 462 total yards, 213. If they're going to make an improvement, I think it'll be in the amount of points that they score here. Uh, they only scored three the first time. I can see them getting more than three here against South Dakota State, but I just don't see them stopping the SDSU offense. Right now, Southern Illinois, like I say, you know, the, when you're a kid, the the Sesame Street show used to have this thing, which one doesn't belong? And what doesn't belong here is the Southern Illinois defense for sure. I think South Dakota State, the ground game certainly works here. I think the passing game, although not, uh, not really eye-popping statistically per game average, with the two twins, um, they've got the ability to throw the football here. So I think that South Dakota State will be just fine. I was surprised that this total came down. I'm actually happy that it came down because 55 can sometimes be a key number. 34-21, um, 38-17, scores like that can get you to 55. And right now we sit underneath that number. So I think I'm going to play it over. Um, South Dakota State shows me no reason 
not to believe that they're going to make it to 30 plus points. And like I said earlier, I just, I find this Southern Illinois offense, they put up over 400 yards last week. While Weber State has not been a good offense all season long, certainly they're one of the better defenses in the nation. Jay Hill and company pride themselves on that. Um, and boy, they sliced it up pretty good. So I think they're going to get their share of points here. That's where they'll improve. I don't think they'll get, um, I don't think they're good enough to cover the number. Let's put it that way. But I think this game gets over the total. I really do think this thing will be mid to upper 50s pretty easily. Weather will be around 70 degrees or so. There's some slight winds potential for just a little bit of light rain in this game uh, as we get. Look, of course, this is Friday, though, so the weather can change on Sunday. Um, make sure to check out our website. So you can find Rob on wagertalk.com. And, of course, he'll have some action in the FCS coming up this weekend. Uh, probably we'll put it up uh, Saturday or Sunday. And then, of course, if I play anything, it'll be um, most likely put up on Sunday as well. I'm on sportsmemo.com. Don't forget to look at the live odds page, especially in the FCS. It's a great thing because if there's an odds move, you're going to want to know why. And you're going to want to know which books are having which odds because the FCS, it, the moves are plentiful. So um, next time we talk to everybody, we will be down to four teams in the FCS uh, playoffs. So for Rob Vino of WagerTalk.com, I'm at JosephSportsMemo.com. Thanks for joining us. We'll be back next week.